Welcome to a little different format of Street Scene Power Hour. This is that 24th episode, so we've done this the whole year. Yeah. And if you're listening to it, we're actually sitting together in the studio. Yes. Um, But uh, this has been a whole year. I mean, it's flown by, but, uh, you know, we want to welcome you listening. We want to welcome you watching this, and we want to welcome or thank you for your support all year long. And we want to keep growing and getting better and bigger and all that other stuff, except bigger in the belly. Too, yeah. <laughs> well, this, yeah, is, this, is, this is the holiday this season. Is, yeah, this is the last show of the year, <laughs> and we're going to get bigger. Yeah, you know? yeah. we got all winter to hibernate and uh, watch TV and uh, watch the Armstrong Cable and uh, get fat. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's a goal this year to get fatter. Fatter, so, oh god, yeah. which we've accomplished. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah, we're doing it. Well, I tell you what, let's go through, you know, we started this pretty much in January of 2021 mm-hmm. and uh, came up with, uh, when I heard that uh, Larry Ward here, uh, his show was over at, at uh, iHeart. Yeah, like, out of here. Yeah, pretty much it was done. <laughs> and we After were like, how many years? 20 years on uh, the two-wheel power, hour, 20, 20 years. years. 20 years, wow, yeah. that's good. So we, that, that was a good run. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what they said. Yeah. Got to be the, thankful, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, we had to grab him up because we didn't want him to go to waste as mm. far as knowledge goes. Mm-hmm. We wanted to get him on here. So mm. we grabbed Larry, we talk, uh, talked to Rick, and we started this podcast. And um, Larry's since, you know, I'm, more, I'm all car guy. I know jack crap about motorcycles. Rick's kind of the in-between. He knows mm-hmm. <laughs> about a little bit about motorcycles. And then you have Larry that knows everything about motorcycles. Mm-hmm. And we all know about cars. So, um, you know, Larry, you brought in a ton of guests for us this year. Let's run some, through. Some good ones, too. Some, some very good ones. A lot yeah. of good ones. Yeah. So, you know, we you brought in, you know, some of them just to, uh, um, you know, with Ted Guthrie. Um, Master Restorer. In yeah. fact, he's uh, finishing up on a 1970 XLCH. He's doing a complete $10,000 restoration on a bike that looked pretty darn good. <laughs> but that bike was uh, belonged to this guy's father, who passed away early in, in this young man's life when he was about 9 or 10. And unbeknownst to him, his mother took that XLCH and put it in storage and kept it uh, like 20, 25 years in storage brought it out, looked like the day his dad wrote it, and they brought it over to vintage, uh, the vintage movement, and uh, that's where Ted is almost finished up with the restoration. I'm talking front to back, every bolt, every nut, everything is like it should have been when it came from the factory. Wow. I, I had a 72 XLCH. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... That was a man's bike. <laughs> that's not a girl's bike like nope. they call sportsters nowadays. Hey, hey, I got a, I got a girl's bike, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> an, uh, eight, I an 883. One. Hey, you have one. I don't even have one. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting rid of it. I'm, I'm getting too scared on it right now. Uh, well, you got <clears> to <throat> gotta get out there and invest in yourself and go to schools and uh, track and, uh, you know, motorcycle safety schools and stuff. You know stuff. what it is with me right now? I'm having too much fun in the cars. Okay, my cars, I just love being in my cars more than I like being on the motorcycles. Yeah, and with so many people out and about nowadays, Mm -hmm. uh, for a variety of reasons, mostly the pandemic, the jobs and that, that uh, it's it's very difficult uh, if you don't ride a lot to get into a situation where you have to do something by rote, where you just do it Mm -hmm. and you do it correctly. And that's what happens, and that's why people get clipped. The number one reason people get clipped on a motorcycle is somebody turns left in front of them. Mm. And uh, I'm a big advocate of uh, ABS, which uh, stops you in a minimum amount of distance without losing control of the motorcycle. I think that's a, a great thing. But there's no substitute for seat time, and there's no substitute for investing in yourself and going to school. Yep. I always assume this guy is going to turn in front of me, always. That's the uh-huh. way I, I'm really, really defensive of my motorcycle. Mm-hmm. I say, if this guy's over here, he's going to turn in front of me. He might not, but I just, uh, just slow down. You know, I've never yeah. had the balance to ride a motorcycle. I've mm. ridden them, I've driven them, and I just can I just don't have it. You know, give me a quad and I'm yeah, fine. I get a truck. Motorcycle, we'll get you, a I'm, <laughs> you know, I just can't do uh-huh. it. But, you know, I'm going to run down a little bit more of the guests. Um, we'll, we'll run, you know, Wade Carl Slagle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim we had him Mo- on a couple times. Yep, yeah. yep. Uh, Guy Shively. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Billy Gibson we had. Oh, Bill. Yep. Then came Bronson Fan Club, the yep. leader of the fan club. And uh, Bill Sumner's 
from Greenville. From Greenville, yep. Uh, Michael Adamski is a good friend of the street scene. Mike Fennell, he's a good friend of us. He was our ex-state cop. This is Stephanie Vetterly on the oh, Pegs Magazine. Steph. Remember, oh, yeah. we went through, you know, I want to encourage people, and I put a post out on Facebook. These shows are on, uh, they're still available, and they're going to stay mm -hmm. there. We pay on, to keep them there for you. On Go back and listen, or, you know, mm -hmm. read the description, and there's, there's a ton of information out there. Uh, Amy Spouts, Wendy Nine. Oh, yeah. Windy. Yeah. Windy. Windy. Why did I say Windy? windy. <laughs> I did that on the show, too. I used to do that a hundred times. Nine. That's okay. Windy but you know nine. what? That's a terrific route. And if you get a chance, uh, if you're a car driver or a motorcyclist and you want to get down south and ride some great routes in that, windy9.com. Okay. And uh, Big Rick, you know, we had oh, him. Yeah. Yeah. We, the DJ, uh, the good DJ. guy. Yep. Yeah. And Thomas John, of course, Thomas the legend, yeah. the infamous he, legend he, of he Thomas. He is John. one of the most mm -hmm. iconic radio figures that are left alive in the market. Mm. Thomas yep. John. Yep. Who could ever forget 12 o'clock high, WSRD, mm. you know? Yeah, and he gave us a lot of insight on just his on his radio career and just what he's seen. And he's been, you know, he just retired, was it pretty much right before you did? Well, yeah, pretty and, much. Um, and, you know, you know, Rick. I'm sorry, Larry and TJ have been in the radio business a long time. Yep. And, you know, it, we have face for radio. <laughs> yeah, we know that's why we got you on the podcast. <laughs> my, I've been growing this beard since No Shave November, and I asked my grandson Wednesday, he's nine, when I took him to school, and he said, What do you think of it? He goes, Grandpa. You look like a homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> it's not long enough yet. Uh, <laughs> I you said, keep it uh, neat. It didn't say you look But conversely, I asked my wife last night, I said, hey, what do you think of that beard? She goes, oh, you know, I, I like it. Wow. Which wow. has an ulterior motive there. I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. what. We haven't married well, 48 she, years. She's so buttering you up for something. No, uh -huh. it's more like the worse he looks, the better. Oh, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mayor. <laughs> Here we go. Um, Alyssa Clickinger. That's what I like. Oh, Alyssa yeah. was really Women's good. Motorcycle Tours. Yeah. Yeah, great yeah. guest. We and she was just awesome. I got her on my Facebook now, and she's all over the place. Yeah, check yeah. that one out yeah. because you know women and motorcycles, yeah. and that was. There has been a big push in the last couple of years to get from the back of the bike to the front of the bike, and I encourage all of the women out there that uh, want to enjoy some freedom, uh, especially all the gear all the time. Make sure you wear your helmet, your jacket, your gloves, because I'll tell you what. Uh, when you fall, and I have, and you will, uh, you know, you want to have the safety gear on to minimize any risk that you might have for injury. It certainly helps out. Yep. All right. We had uh, Keith Sturgeon, great artist. Uh, he, oh, as yeah. you've seen his career take off. Yeah. He was on with Alyssa. Yeah. yeah. He oh, was. My gosh. And, they, yeah. and those two kind of uh, business wise hit it off on mm -hmm. the podcast, and she invited him out. His, uh, Keith has just done a ton after sure. that. So wow. let's, take credit. let's take credit for yeah. Keith making his career. career. <laughs> he, he's a go-getter, though. You know that. He's yeah, a he is. But he's yeah. an artist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, boy. Well, yeah, Dick Frost, you know, he was uh, in charge yeah. of uh, the Quaker City Loop. Loop. And, yeah, you know, great guy. Yep, Dick he's Frost. Great he did that for how many years? 10, 12 years or yeah, something and, like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he finally tossed in the towel on that one, mm -hmm. and I don't blame him. It's a tough gig to follow. Dan Gallagher and Al Flanhofer. Yeah, they were the two uh, committee co-chairs for the uh, National Council of Corvette Clubs National <clears throat> Convention that was held mm -hmm. in Cleveland this year. Huge success. And uh, that involved not only car shows and games, but it also involved some pretty serious stuff like drag racing for national records, autocrossing, and of course, out on N Nelson Ledge's uh, 3.2 road race course. I've been on that with a couple of guys, been on it with a bike, but a couple of the road race guys in their cars and you really wail out there. That's awesome. Did you see they had some da uh, tornado damage over at the Corvette Museum again? Yeah. Again. <laughs> They're like a, yeah. the epitome of having bad luck over at the Corvette Museum. <laughs> if you yeah. remember the yeah. uh, when the sinkhole fell in, of all the places in the world, <laughs> right there's a the sinkhole center, right underneath on. the Corvette Museum. I have been there, down there so many times. They now have a, a, a dynamic display yeah. where you can stand there and feel the, the stuff, and then they have a little thing where the 
it look, appears like dirt's falling down the hole and you're standing there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But <laughs> they, I, oh, man. They, they made a positive out of a negative. Well, yeah. what yeah. Are, the one thing about the Corvette Museum that is extremely fun and exciting is that even if you're not a Corvette lover, just the history of how the car came to fruition in 1953. And back then, you know, when you're talking fiberglass, you're talking, uh, like nowadays, they can bond a car together. Well, I'll put that fender and bond it onto that. And in, uh, you know, a couple hours with the new products and that. But I mean, back then, when you started building those things, I mean, you'd bond it and you'd have to wait 24 to 48 hours before it's cured. And the thing I like is you can see the people like Zora Arcus mm -hmm. Duntoff. And I used to laugh because when I was growing up in drag racing, we used to, I had no idea what a 30-30 Duntoff cam was other than <laughs> I know I needed it in my small block to go mm -hmm. back, or the 097 <clears throat> cam. And, yeah. and so you go through that, but then you go through and you get to see the women behind the guys that were the big time GM executives and how their wives embraced the car, embraced the lifestyle spoke for the car and you know it's just a fabulous you gotta go yeah. you, you know those weren't too well put together back then either. Six, not the 53, early ones 54. No, but boy noticed? I'll tell you what yeah. if you had one you'd have uh, something worth a hundred and a half two hundred thousand yeah, yeah, yeah they're uh, they're quite yeah they're quite uh, mm -hmm. sought after and you know we had uh, let me see, let me see, I'm not trying to butcher the name here Pat Mogavero Magavaro. Magavaro. As a matter of, of fact, of course, I did butcher the yeah, name. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned that. Pat is the president of the Motorcycle Sport Touring Association. You can check it out. It's an all-inclusive motorcycle club, and they do a lot of rallies throughout the year. But their claim to fame is they don't tent camp. You stay in a hotel, and it's so what we call a hub and spoke. So you take off from there, ride, and then come back. And the other thing is that it's almost a mandate you wear all the gear all the time. And, you know, we have good gear. You know, helmets are five, six, seven hundred dollars Jackets are four or five hundred. Um, but you know what? Uh, it's a small price to pay if you, have, if you go down. But one of the things is Pat lives in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. And I called him last night, and I said, uh, Pat, how is things there? I know there's devastation and mm. stuff with the mm -hmm. tornadoes. And he said, fortunately, that's about 100 miles away, and it did not affect me or any of my extended family members. So we're wishing everybody in Kentucky well. So yep, we're on the east side of Kentucky, because yeah. that hit the west side yeah, of Kentucky. Yeah, he's right? actually yeah. on Mount Sterling, so you can come right down out of uh, Columbus, and I think you can take, I'm trying to remember, 20 or 21, and come straight down mm -hmm. through there, and that, then, then you got to right. make a right on the 64. tornado was, what, 200 miles straight? It just took yeah. off, oh, it just yeah. stayed there, 200 yeah, miles. Yeah, it didn't, and it didn't leave, is mm -hmm. the point. It didn't, uh, oh. it didn't dissipate, it just kept on going. It's not, it's which the was, loss of life that's devastating, yeah, that's, you know, the oh, yeah. people. The families you know, that are affected. And they're still missing people. I said, go oh, check down the road about 100 miles. They're probably That's, yeah, in the woods terrible. somewhere or in a tree. Yeah. Or, oh, God. It's, it's terrible. You know, and, uh, you know, I don't have all, again, I just noticed I don't have all the names, but uh, um, Adam Pratt from Youngstown Cycle and Speed, awesome. Mm -hmm. you know, Boy, they're doing great work out oh, there. Oh, sure. Yeah, you go up, if, yeah, go up to <laughs> Youngstown Cycle and Speed, because you know what I saw out there was a, a 58 Plymouth. Uh-huh. Fury of the Christine. The Christine. Oh, yeah. Was it I like, saw one sitting out there. Like the big fence. Was it look? Did it look like Christine? No, it no. was a turquoise color, but okay. it was the same. It had the same trim and everything. So that I was, was sitting a, there drooling. I almost stopped in. Yeah. That was but a that's a great body place. Style, it's the old yeah. Youngstown Cycle, mm -hmm. and they do it's such uh, nice work. And they're working on a 34T bucket right now, and they're relocating the steering gear and the steering box. And that you get a chance to get up there, say hello to Adam, and uh, walk through the shop. Uh, there's always something there that is handcrafted that you can give to someone that you really like that they'll not have another one like that. Yeah, we so, gave or he can even make something that yeah, give something you trophies? hate. Yeah, you know, just give it the here's a, here's a pile of poo or something. Yeah. You know? No, but I mean, That's, didn't he do trophies for you? He did, he did the trophies. Yeah. We gave five of those away. Yeah. 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 Five of those or six? How many oh, no, we gave ten away. Oh, was it ten? Oh, that was at that summer okay. Austin Town Park. Yeah, yeah. that was our street scene car custom bike show. He made the trophies. We were hoping to get them to make again, and we're going to have more trophies on that show. Um, Good job, you know, Adam. We had Krista Sylvester from wrapping up the show with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love her. Um, what a car, car girl. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah car no. buff, car yeah, girl. Yeah, she is. She yeah. is, uh, <clears throat> she is uh, high end European sports cars. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, we had um, 
John Flores, Pat Adams. The BMW RA guys. Joey Sylvester. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, one of our all-time special guests, Corey Ward. Mm -hmm. Corey you know, Ward. Corey's dad. Corey's dad. <laughs> yeah. That's affectionately how I'm known now. I have lost my name. As yeah. my son's career and prominence in the community has grown, <laughs> mine has now decreased. And once I flatlined and retired, yeah. Yeah, it's, it does. Corey's dad. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just Corey's dad. And I readily accept that as yeah. a mantle of my son's He's success. been on the radio for 20 years, and all of a sudden, Corey's a son. Yeah, I know. And uh, I'm trying to think. I don't have it listed, the, the guy from uh, the tire guy. T.J. Tennant. Oh, T.J. Yeah, Tennant. <clears throat> one of my favorite guests we had and on. we will Chief, have him on again. Chief we'll engineer on. globally for uh, Bridgestone Tires. And uh, uh, one of the classes that I used to race, uh, on motorcycling was called a spec class. That meant that everybody <coughs> used pretty much the same tire. So if it was done, and Bridgestone at one time, along with Dunlop, are the two major supporters of uh, many of the spec classes uh, that you'll see running in like uh, Wira, Arma, you know, uh, but not necessarily in Moto GP. That's pretty okay. much open in that. So, well, but yeah, he's a great guy and he's a, uh, reconstruction accident reconstruction as it pertains to did that tire or did that tire not cause this accident yeah and that take a lot of skill to try to oh, figure that out he's a wealth of knowledge you oh, know that yeah. this, this some of the stuff we talked to him for an hour and it was like well that's why we <clears> scheduled him <throat> again yeah, and we're gonna have him again in february yeah. because yeah. tj Call me. I need to borrow the Ferrari. Call me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we got to see some pictures of that Ferrari. Yeah, yeah you better be well every time, insured. Every uh -huh. time I see him post that he's heading to Europe or somewhere, hey, Let me can borrow. I borrow the Ferrari Friday if, night? If you haven't seen that episode, it's really interesting. <laughs> what episode was that, like 22 or 21 or something was, like I that? think it was 21. I'd have uh -huh. to check. But yeah. again, you know, if you want to listen to the podcast, go binge them, you know, mm -hmm. during this Christmas break coming up. On Download YouTube. them all. Yep. Start throwing them in your car if you're driving to work, or you know, throwing them in your car. It sounds like something I've got a CD on. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, just load them into your podcast, iHeartMedia, uh, Spotify, Buzzsprout, uh, all the major ones we are on. Mm -hmm. So, and you can always check out the video version on YouTube. Hey, you heard that new website, BYOB? Let's see, what is that? I know. Bring your own beer while you're listening. Okay. I've heard BYOB and bring your own a lot of different things at the end. Bring all? Yeah, so. Bring your own. I didn't say that. But, you know, we're going to keep on moving. We're always looking for interesting guests. So, we got some things planned for you guys to start off the new year and we are going to try to we're going to keep moving we and we want along. more listeners share with your friends share with your family uh get involved you know we we want to keep this car and motorcycle uh tradition going so we're we going to keep going a long winter to get through here yeah <laughs> yeah well you know um we you know there's a lot we've gone through mm -hmm. but there's a lot that you don't know about who we are and you know our backgrounds so yeah we we don't there's a lot of mm -hmm. backgrounds about rick you don't want to know no you don't want to yeah know. <laughs> I, but uh i want to start off with larry because he's our newest member here um larry's got an, an extensive but i think background. i'm the oldest now I yeah. think I've been taking those tea bags secretly and been trying to dye this with tea, wet tea bags. You know, I heard that was not because that's what's dripped down your <laughs> neck. Yeah, <laughs> you forgot to wipe mm -hmm. that off. Well, uh, if you want me to just kind of go through my background, that yeah, how do you? Uh, you my, know, were you always interested in bikes and yes. engines from day one? Well, you, what I can tell you is this: as I was growing up and got into that nine, 10, 11 year old thing. I had a Lambretta motor scooter and it would beat those Honda Sport 50. So that was the first kind of thing. And I didn't have a license and that, but you got to remember back when I was growing up uh, in 67, 68, 69, 69 I was 18 years old. But back in 66, like you could get your driver's license at 15 and a half. Yeah. So when I was 13 or 14, my dad owned three gas stations and I had an old 53 Chevy, it's kind of and in he your had a big somewhere. lot, and I could practice <clears throat> stick shift, how mm -hmm. to drive it, and all that stuff, yep. you know. And uh, so that's where I got the bug, and then um, I, I had played some <clears throat> sports in that, but because my dad started acquiring the gas stations, he came home one day, 
And he said, uh, hey, ne starting next week, you're going to be going to the gas station at 3.30 after you get home. And I go, oh, but I can't, Dad. I, I've got baseball practice, football <laughs> practice. I got, and he goes, not anymore. Oh, wow. He just said that's, that's so, it. But, you know, and it's not like I didn't like my dad or anything, but that's just the way it was when you're growing up. It's like, wow. uh, this is more important. It's a family business. We're making it for your grand. But you know what? Even though that kind of hurt me because I thought I might have been halfway decent at baseball, but on the other side of it, it opened up a whole new th side of things that I'd have never, ever gotten into. And it now, became what was a blessing. What's the gas station called? Well, we had a Sunoco on State Street oh, and Struthers. No he had kidding. an Atlantic Richfield called Arco uh, yeah, over, over there the by the Elmton. And then where the, everything really became full circle, we had a Sunoco also on uh, Williamson Avenue, and, Williamson and South Avenue by St. Stanislaus Church, where I was eventually oh, got married to my is wife. Is that lot still empty there? Uh, no, it's some guy. Some, I always thought about going back and just buying the one down it because it's like love's janitorial service oh. and i i actually <laughs> stopped one day and wanted to was going to see and nobody's there was going to see if something but anyways uh that's how i started out on motorcycles now there was nobody in my family that had a motorcycle but at the same time uh i had a 55 chevy in high school and a 283 punched out the 301 with a three speed and but i rode my motorcycle to graduation yeah and it was funny because uh, I pulled up. I can remember like it was yesterday, and I can't remember usually yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> long, can, term, long, long term, long term, long term, yeah. short term memory that's what loss. When you get my older. Uh, mom and my <clears throat> grandfather, because my dad had worked a lot, he was a general foreman in the steel mill, plus he had those businesses. And I can remember wheeling up on my bike, and uh, back then uh, I had these little, I had a Triumph with shorty pipes that came, like they call TT yeah. pipes. It was loud. Okay. And I'd wheel up there and have my helmet on, and then I just had a T-shirt, and I had my gown stuck down the front, so it was stuck <laughs> out this big, and I had that square hat. So I parked the bike, went uh, W.W. Walker Ward, poof, stood right in there, took Paul all the stuff out, put the hat on, and we were the first class in 1969 to graduate outdoors in Poland. But if you remember, and they've now torn down the bleachers in Baird Mitchell this year, uh, where we had played football. But behind the south goalpost, there's a steep hill there. And I used to take my bike, take it all the way down the bike path, and then roam and jump that son of a gun, see if I could get it close to the uh, crossbar. But that's how I, <laughs> oh, well, I get it going back then. It was pretty good. Uh -huh. But that's how I earned all those pins and you know braces and stuff like that. So that's, uh, yeah. And, yeah. And so I, I've rode bikes all my life, and eventually I got into long distance riding, and I belong to the Iron Butt Association. So you gotta pretty much do a thousand miles in 24 hours, and I uh, have a picture of uh, the in certificate. In 24 hours? I did 1187, Ooh. 1187 miles in 18 and a half hours. Went down to Nashville, had a sandwich, turned right around, come back. Jeez. Get out. Oh yeah, rock wow. and roll. That's when you were young though. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm part of I could fat sit on butt. the bike yeah. long enough. The fight butt association, fat and, butt association. And then the other I thing am. is, I like to go to yeah. Daytona every year. I, I've been going to Daytona since 1969. I've missed a couple of times in between there, but not many. But it's kind of like it's the same old thing, which is okay. But at the same time, it's a breather for me because at my old career at iHeart, by the time I get to March, I either want to kill somebody. <laughs> or be killed or something, commit suicide. Even, you Almost know. at the end so of the winter. To, there, yeah, yeah, I need to take a break. And as the closer I got to retirement, the more that became possible, yeah. that I would either homicide or suicide. Yeah. So, But yeah, so my whole life has been around and involved in motorcycles. Oddly enough, uh, even though I have three wonderful sons, uh, Larry, uh, Corey, and Steve, and they're all doing very well in their careers, uh, if I was to point to one person, oddly enough, it's Corey that uh, could take a motorcycle and get on it without even knowing anything about it and wheelie it. And uh, he had a wonderful career as a, a BMX racer. Yeah. We used to travel the country. He was sponsored by a company called Zero Nine. And as an eight, nine, and ten-year-old, uh, he was the number one expert in the state of Ohio. And we used to go to the President's Cup every year. And uh, I still have his uniform his state championship trophy, and uh, his helmet. Oh. And I think I have one frame left up in the thing. I used to spend, I, 
I remember back then I was an advertising manager of a small <laughs> newspaper, and if I got 300 bucks a week, that was good. Yeah. And, and you know what? I put everything. I remember one day spending $300 on a frame, and my wife said, what? <laughs> she goes, well, what are we going to eat? And I go, I don't know, but he, he's got potential, and I want to give him the best shot he can, so we'll just have to get some hot dogs and baked beans. Yeah. And to this day, mm -hmm. my wife laughs about it because every once in a while she'll pop out the hot dogs and baked beans. She goes, remember why we did this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's pretty dang good. Yeah. yeah. Of course. So sounds that, like one of those guys could do good anything he tries. He, he is. He's, he's I hate you know, the, <laughs> I know. <laughs> the, the oldest son has a degree from Ohio State and another from Cleveland State. The youngest one's got two master's degrees plus a baccalaureate. And they live in pretty nice places, but Corey lives in Villa Rosa next to the Tippy Canoe Country Club. He has a high school education, but he has the secret to be wealthy and successful and lead a wonderful life. He knows how to treat people and he knows yeah. how to get along. You don't need a college education no, to make it. No, you know no I know a lot of dumb minds, people that yeah. have college education. Yeah. That, you know, <laughs> yeah. No, that uh, yeah, they, sat, they just put in the time and got it, but yeah. that doesn't mean they're smart. No, you, know? you just you know? need to push. Mm -hmm. You need to get a little push in this life mm -hmm. and keep moving for what you want to do. Um, well, that's it for me. Yeah, Larry. Um, let me let me just ask one more question here. You got into iHeart and started when you started streets or street scene power hour. That's what this two. is. Two two wheel oh, yeah. power hour. <clears throat> when you started that uh, response, I mean, I've heard of that show for a long time, and you were with <laughs> it a long time. Twenty years. Yeah. Now, what started that? Well, I'll tell you how it began, and it's it's very funny. Because one day, Ron Romanstraw, who was our Harley guy, uh, talked Youngstown Harley Davidson, which was a Buell, yeah. to sponsor the show. And they ponied up, I don't know, 20, 25 grand and got the show started. And that lasted about a year. And then uh, we had Rob Bytus, and everybody knows Rob, wonderful guy, one of the voices of uh, motocross racing. Uh, uh, on TV and that, and just a just a terrific promoter of all things motorcycling, and does a great job. Never forgets the valley. Just a cool guy. So Rob stepped in, and Rob uh, took over as the voice of the uh, motorcycle show. And they had kind of moved here and there, and you know, we didn't have a really strong advertising base. And if you know anything about radio, TV, everything is driven by the dollar. You know, mm. everything in That's life, is, sure. yes. Yes. Everything yeah. in life yeah. is driven That's by that almighty sure. dollar. So, uh, so what happened is stuff. that uh, <clears throat> one day uh, Rob had decided to take a position that uh, had him being the voice of motocross on TV and some other things. I think I'm remembering this right. And he was going to have to try and do the show out on the road. Da -da. And that creates, at that time, we didn't have all the technology that we had ten, even 10 years yeah. later in the show. And so uh, we kind of mutually agreed. Rob stepped out and did his thing, and we brought in Dick Lepley, Street Track and Trail. Dick Lepley is a big benefactor of motorcycling, supports a lot of the motorcycle museums around the country. Uh, and Dick has a superb collection of old Honda, the old HRC racing bikes. You mean the 250 six the, cylinders? Isn't that the one you've got? Or is that one you had? I don't know. No, but, anyways, yeah. Dick became the voice of that and uh, Dan Rivers who was the program director yep. at the time came to me and he said well here, here's the situation he said we're paying the host more than we're actually bringing in on the show <laughs> we need to fix that Sounds well you like know what show. happens <laughs> so then I created uh, I created a show that became uh, inclusive to all motorcyclists from mopeds to mini bikes to, to high-end racing so there's something for everybody if you tune into the show and off it began, and that's the first year we did the Daytona Bike Week trip. Yep. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, have a friend, uh, Monica, who was a managing partner uh, down at uh, the La Play at that time, and we were able to broadcast live from Daytona our show, and it just took off from there. And in the beginning, when you said Power Hour, 
I would walk into a motorcycle shop and say, I'm from the two-wheel power, I would like to talk to you about advertising. And they go, I'm sorry, but uh, we don't do Christian TV or Christian TV. <laughs> <laughs> I've never power. thought of that. No, no, yeah. power hour, the yeah. The power the hour. hour. <clears throat> and so, power of power. So it, it, give you it, a blessing. it became <laughs> the tabernacle of motorcycling, though. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the, rest is, the rest is history. Uh, I've had a wonderful run on that show. I couldn't thank iHeart enough for all of the help and support uh, that they had given me over the years and uh, to allow me to continue to do the show uh, because it's extraordinary in this day and age when you have very large corporations and uh, it's kind of like the economy of scale where they could uh, take a voice that's in St. Louis and have them voice track and literally seem like they're there. You could call in, you could talk to them and that. So you could get a major market voice that might be $150,000. <clears> we could never afford that in Youngstown, no. but iHeart gave us the ability to be able to have those top flight on-air personalities in our market. And then, of course, you intermix that with your live local content like Dan Rivers, Ron Verb, two legendary guys. Yep. And uh, off is running, you know. Yeah. But I can't thank iHeart enough. They. Uh, they were really special, and they, and they allowed me to do an awful lot unchecked. They just trusted me to it, not get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like you've done a good job, and we're pleased to have you on Street Scene Power Hour Thank you. now. Um, Rick, uh, you know what? It, there's, you know, we've done this show for, we've done Street Scene for 12, 12 years, years now. now yeah. Only 13 well, Wow. Uh, 2000s. I've You've, done it for 11. Yeah. First year you did it yeah. by yourself. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> no host. You know, it's, you're know, going on 13 years, mm -hmm. and uh, we've gone over the, a little bit, but uh, for our street scene power, our listeners, you know, they don't know much. They know the CU on TV, mm -hmm. but do they know? What else don't they know? We don't want to go into detail about your no, no, personal love life or jail. anything like that. Remember, forget, don't, don't say anything about yeah. that jail thing. Yeah, let it go. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can look that up online. You just got your license back. Uh, I remember good. you telling the lady when you went to get your driver's yeah. thing, you said, oh, hey, I just got it back. Yeah, I'm no. happy. I'm a con man. No, no. So, when you mean, watch these shows, just don't watch the first five seasons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I was really sketchy at the first few. You had, you had yeah. color in your hair then, too. Oh, yeah. I had, a lot, more, I had a lot more hair, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. But it was color. It was fun. Yeah, it's gray. Right. I was, a, I was a radio man when I was in college. I so, you know, again, radio. we've all worked together at one mm -hmm. point in time at different businesses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was with Rick at KBN. Um, KBN TV for many years. Uh, Larry was at uh, KBN Radio yeah. in the same building with me for a lot of years too. I was in the radio right. too back. And you were in the radio. KBN you know. Radio until so, you moved. Yeah, we've all we've all been in the broadcasting business. We could probably consider ourselves broadcasters very mm -hmm. loosely. Uh, but Rick, you know, you you've gone over this before, but you know, there's got to be something in your blood that made you like cars. Mm -hmm. Oh, my brother. My, that, when okay. I was growing up, my brother Ronnie, who's not with us anymore, he uh, died a number of years ago, back in '79, uh, and pressure blew up on him. Ooh. But uh, oh, working, uh, we're working with his car. He was doing that. what he liked to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And he, when I was a young kid, he was always racing his '63 uh, Chevy convertible. Okay. He was always blowing it up. Okay. <laughs> Taking it to the Sunset Drag Strip up there. In oh Charleston. my God. Yeah. And Love he, he would place. blow it up, and, and I was the little brother at the time. I was like five years younger than him. Hey, Rick, come over here. I need some help. And I'm carrying heads around and all this. <laughs> here, tighten this and do this. And, that. and that's where I got into it at, you know. So, yeah. 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 No, I wanted a box wrench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah not, a, not a crescent wrench. And, uh -huh. you know, I saw, uh, I, just to go off the uh, little <laughs> path here, is I saw a little post that says, this is the best tool in the world. It had a double-end crescent wrench, one mm -hmm. for standard one for metric. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you, you think about it, a crescent wrench adjustable. So yeah. yeah. I like, I I think so. had a That's great sort of like that. that goes right there with blinker fluid. Yeah, blinker oh, fluid, yeah. and they actually sell it. Uh, never heard of <laughs> okay, that. Okay, I'm going to tell you why they. I say that because it's not really blinker fluid, but a lot of the, I think it's the Lamborghinis had to cool their headlight lenses off with fluid because they got so hot. <laughs> and that's where that's uh -huh. coming from. And I, I you know, know. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, I was reading about that. I'm like, they started melting this and they started running 
like fluid through the to headlight cool lenses down, to yeah. cool it down. So they call it, you know, call it blinker that, fluid. Huh? Um, but, uh, you know, since you were growing up with your brother and that, mm -hmm. uh, you got more into the detailing end of it. Yeah, we, we started a detail shop and everything. We had an auto body shop and a detail shop, and, and uh, that's where I started, basically. And I was making some money back then, working numerous jobs. And working. you worked gas stations. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's where I started, in the gas <laughs> yeah. station, changing oh, yeah. oil and, you know, pumping gas and changing tires and, you know, whatever it took, you know. Back and that's why... I was what 15, 16 years old, yeah. You know, pumping yeah. gas and... Yeah, we all remember the green stamps. I hated those. Oh, yeah. Oh, we had the yeah. green stamps. Man, I'll tell you, S -S 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 my grandmother bag yeah. pulls the yeah. green stamps. That's the green stamps. That grandmother, yeah. the green stamps, man, you're oh. going to get tackled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but I, I got to tell you, if you've ever watched the movie Hollywood Nights. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Back when I was growing up, and maybe you too, Rick, when I would be at the gas station, I mean, I met a lot of girls there. Yeah. You know, working, having a turn. But I'll tell you what, that was almost like the Hollywood Nights. Uh, right next door, the, uh, the Maseko brothers, I mean, they had hot, hot rod, 55, 56 Chevys. They were the guys to beat. There was another guy, Danny, or, I'm trying to remember, Ornaeus or Ongaius. He had a 59 Corvette. Another guy had a 427 split window, 63, 427. I didn't even know they put the 427s in 63. Yeah, well, maybe I guess they, I, you know, I don't, I thought that stuff, but again, I don't know. Oh my God. I'm not you, the expert you, on that, the vets. If you remember State Street and Strother, that's a long strip. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, I remember they'd go from that stoplight there and they'd hit about 105 going by our gas <laughs> station. And I just said, oh man, I, I want one of those. Yeah. You know, and so. Yeah. Cause, uh, well, even when you were growing up, Rick is, you know, what were the hot cars when you were? Well, all the muscle cars nowadays, like yeah. the Chevelles, the Camaros, yeah. the Mustangs, just about the same, you know. Yeah. Those were in the Daytona. What you yeah. know, the Daytona and the, oh, yeah. those weren't hot oh, at all. Yeah. Those weren't hot at all. They were sitting in parking lots in the nobody dealer lot. Them. Yeah, nobody, nobody wanted, wanted them. them. Nobody they wanted were them. ugly. Yeah. Remember that? They were very and ugly. Superbird. Yeah. yeah, and the Superbird. Yeah. That was the yeah. other Superbird. One. Yeah. yeah, they could. They and then couldn't they banned them at Talladega and Daytona because they were too fast. Yeah, they put. They started dropping the Hemi's in there. The race Hemi's. Which are extremely rare now. The mm -hmm. race Hemi's, not the street Hemi's. The race Hemi's are a totally different animal. You know, a Hemi right now, just a motor, is twenty-five grand. <laughs> wow! I know. Just <laughs> I asked about it uh -huh. at Corey Corey Ward swap meet. The David had swap meet. Some guy had a couple of them, and I said, "Well, how, like, <laughs> how much?" And he goes, "It's twenty-five thousand." Oh went, yeah. I, I thought he was talking about the whole car. Oh, I go, "You mean for, for this whole Hemi? car?" And he, he looked at me and he goes, "We're." What year did you come out of? Twenty-five thousand for the motor. Brand new? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, I'm wow. like twenty. Get a date coded '68 <clears throat> Hemi, '68, '69, '70 Hemi block, mm -hmm. and see what they're going for. And I won't mention names, but we did a show a long time ago that uh, one of our guests had to look for a race Hemi, and they're so rare. And at that time, it was Ooh. 15 like years one of ago. Those Keith Black ones. Yeah. Oh. One, he paid fifty thousand yeah. for it years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't imagine what they're going for now. I'll Maybe. tell you, instead of buying property, putting your money in the bank, no. doing stocks, buy cars. I'm stocking mm -hmm. my cars away and maybe they'll be worth Put a dollar. A maybe five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> my cars. Remember we went down to uh, Don Schneider's and he had the Ford Hemi down there? Oh, yeah, that the was Ford the first Hemi. I heard of that. The yes, Ford there's Hemi. a Ford yeah. Hemi and GM yeah. also made a Hemi. GM made one too? Yes, they okay. did. And um, Well, that Hemi refers to the combustion chamber, mm -hmm. hemispherical. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. And a lot, of, a lot of engines had hemispherical chambers, mm -hmm. but Chrysler is the Chrysler one that, that really, the whole thing. yeah, they, they patented the Hemi name mm -hmm. and they made, again, it ranks up there right now with the ALS motors. Mm -hmm. People are building the Hemis, uh, uh, the new Hemis. You and know, the, there's the, the L98, I mean, in Corvette terms, you know, the, there's the Crossfire, then there's the L98, the mi, I'm which sorry. is sequential The Misfire, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then, <laughs> but then Those they, the... they start moving up to the LT1, the LT4, but once you got that LS1, that was a game changer. I remember yeah. the first year I seen an Impala out at Quaker City with an LS1 that, in that it. That Corvette and it, engine in it. Yeah, yeah. ripped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the engineering on that, the oh, yeah. LS motor was completely game-changing. My cousin had one. She didn't know what she had either. She had one, and she worked at Lordstown, and Nasty. she had one. I said, it, you got that Corvette engine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll find out for yeah. you. Just give me the keys. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I, I read an article today. Friend John Martin sent me an article. They're talking about what cars to buy now that might be collectible. Mm -hmm. And get this, 
a Suzuki Samurai. They are telling selling you to is buy that, the Suzuki. That that little, yes, yeah, yeah. It's it's they're like, telling you to buy the Suzuki Samurais because they're starting to skyrocket in value. What, what, Chevy had one that was the tracker. same thing. Yeah, the tracker. Yeah. I had one of those. <clears throat> really? Yeah, and then I loaned it to my son. He went to Ohio State and he just tore it. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Who would work on that Suzuki now? Is there? Oh, they're, anybody. they're so simple. Anybody can yeah, work on those. But I, I, I found that very strange. They're hard to find. Yeah, that, that's that are the running, point. Yeah. That yeah. are running and halfway. It's trying. It's the same thing as when I was growing up. Something similar would be the old International Scout. You remember the Scouts? Oh, the Scouts oh those are going are for a lot of money. Oh, my buddy yeah. had that thing. We my go. buddy had a '78 sitting in yeah. his backfield. Mm -hmm. And I'm I and I remember we were like we tried to get it running and it was just the wires chewed they up. They had the old flathead. Yeah. Floor, but I'll Junked tell you it. what, yeah. when we when I was 13, 14, and we would go up to the mountains every year deer hunting, I mean that was the vehicle to have. They never broke down. They were really good and, you know, you beast, no four days, wheel drive. Old, it's for some But money. they also rusted up. Yeah. Sure. They well, were like everything else. Like yeah. the Broncos now. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, oh, those, those things are. Big are bucks, yeah. And, uh, you know. Well, that little, the 79, 78, those little shorter Bronco, not that. <clears throat> Bronco twos. Yeah. Well, they had the Bronco twos in the 80s, which. Mm -hmm. They're worth money. Man. Yeah, they're uh, money. they're worth uh, anything like that. That square body Chevy trucks. I've seen. The, yep. I just it was a couple of years ago. I got my rid of my '91 F-150. It was a oh. square mm -hmm. body, and I junked it. It was just totally rotted out. You and now those things, things are right. going for big bucks. That totally rotted out. Thing. <laughs> I told her <laughs> for three hundred dollars because uh, it had the three hundred six in it, and it only had seventy two thousand miles. Motor, though. Yeah, um, but. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add, Rick? That what have you been? What have you guys been doing this year? Uh, you've been working on your Thunderbird, I take it, Rick? Uh, not really. No, okay. Just I just want to check. It's just Make sitting sure. there in the corner right now. <laughs> Whatever so. happened to that? Oh, you need to talk to Haas about that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think mm -hmm. he said he'd help you move. My neighbor's mm -hmm. T-Bird oh, yeah. sitting up there still, so yeah. they're trying to sell it. It's just so nice. I hate to sell it, you know. But uh, know. it's time to move on. I have. I've five never years. seen you in it. Huh? I've yeah. never. seen I've seen you out of it with the hood up. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, Rick. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> but I'll tell you what not to do, okay? Don't buy a toy at the end of the summer that you can't drive until I just bought that Z4. So BMW. you're itching. Oh, oh look at the weather God. out here with oh, the weather we God. had lately. That's a great car. Yeah, I yeah. got an 09 Z4 BMW. Boy, oh, boy. Convertible with 19,000 miles. It's the thing is a beauty, and I got it in the garage, sitting there, covered up. And I'm like, every day I go. Ah, ah, no, I had some, uh, had some weather out here. Couple yeah. of days that were nice. Yeah. You could have because there's no salt on the road. I now. don't have insurance on. I just have fire on it right now. Oh, so okay. In the garage. Yeah. yeah. So you sold your 370Z. Yep, I right? sold okay. 350Z. The yeah. 350Z. Yeah. The that was. Said. You know what? You want a fun car? That's a fun car. That would be a good autocross yeah. car. I think oh, that would. Rip. There's so much fun, and that didn't even have the big engine. Was that auto? Did it automatic? Yes. Stick? Mm -hmm. did, it have the, did it have paddles so you could shift it up and uh -uh. down or did you have to pull it in? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was fun though. It just, it just oh, yeah. ran right. It okay. was 280 horsepower, only weighed a couple thousand pounds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're about, you're about this far from the ground. How <laughs> far? He's, he's saying this far. It's yeah. like four inches. Let's yeah. put it that way. For you listeners that can't see yeah. what we're doing. So, uh, <laughs> Some guy wanted to buy it off me and I said, I don't want to sell it. I don't want to sell it. But Sometimes they're a little bit yeah, yeah. persistent, and you got it. I said, "Give me a price," and I gave him a price, and uh, and I said, "Okay." He I didn't blink, it. huh? He didn't. Yeah. Well, he blinked a little bit, and then they come back with another price, and I said, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I had a year ahead of time, my life in there, and yeah, uh, and you're I still to move you're, on. You're detailing yeah. cars. You said you had like five this week, or yeah. geez, four, four, four. four. Yeah. So Where do you detail them at? My garage. Oh, oh. heater and all that. That's my man cave, man. I can live in there. The only oh, thing I don't have in there. Oh, I see. <laughs> I got a, Did you have a lift in that garage? No, not the air oh. lift. I got an air <laughs> it's, it's a lift up it's, coming up. Uh, 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 <laughs> you're, here, you're out in the garage and Rick, uh, you're beep, beep, beep. Rick looks his phone. Hey, I'm here. Yeah, for yeah. what? Who's here? It's air conditioned. Oh. It's heat. I got a lift. I haven't put mine up yet. But Water. Sitting uh, outside. LED, LED lights. It's all, yeah. it's all ready to Good. go. I just need a buddy with a lift. Mm -hmm. I'll remember that when I get mine up. I just had to put a clutch in that Mustang and I didn't have a lift, so I had to send it. You got to try to quit driving it so hard. Oh boy, the dead silence. Of, yeah, we know what happened. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, you had a pretty bad accident in that Mustang, didn't you? Oh, not bad. Just some guy hit the left front fender, crossed over, and hit it. And you know, it's in a parking lot, so you might as well throw your hands up. 
my insurance company and theirs said, oh, well, we just pay for each other's. But I had to pay my, and I, so I called him up and I said, I want my $500 deductible back. He hit me. Yeah. So, so, yeah. But yeah, you got it all fruitless. fixed up. Oh, really yeah. nice Mustang. It's an, what, is Better that an 07? Yeah, 07, yeah. five speed. Orange. You know what's wrong about right now you get an accent? Everybody wants to see a Carfax report on it, you know? And, and that deducts from the, you know, when you go to sell it, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I suppose it would be reported on a Carfax. If yeah. it went to the, in, through the insurance company, it it's was reported. reported. So a lot of yeah. cars aren't recorded at Carfax because they didn't go through the insurance company. Say you had a thousand dollar accident in your car, you say, well, I can't do that because my insurance is going to go up and you pay for it on your own yeah. and you don't tell the insurance, well, it's not going to show up on the Carfax. Yeah. Huh. So the Carfax is like, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I've actually had people ask for Carfax on mm -hmm. different things sure. that I'm selling. So. I got one on my car. I just a little leery of it, but then somebody said, man, that's pretty normal. I said, no, well, yeah. what no, information really can they get? I mean, they can't get your Social Security number. No, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, no, it just tells uh, with cars with an accident what the well, recalls are. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, any problem with the VIN number. It tells you the maintenance on it and all yep. that. Yeah, so. one, of, one, of my, uh, one of the guys that I like an awful lot is Mike Hudock. He's the general manager yeah. down at uh, Stadium GM. And also Bob Davis, the owner of uh, Fairway Ford, the both buds. Mike has and, some nice uh, cars too. Yeah, and Mike is, believe it or not, one of the premium Mustang restoration experts. He's got a rotisserie. And he's also garage. got that 68 Shelby GT500. Yeah. Oh, that's the one we saw down the Salem. It's green, yeah. yeah, green. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. exactly. And, nice. and the story behind that? I think that's a 500. That, yeah, it's a 500 yeah, KR. Yeah. KR, so it's, yeah, it's the not the best. Uh, best. That was the... And that was a top of the line, and it's yeah. a convertible too. Yeah. So that thing's worth some big so, bucks. Yeah. I would call Mike if I'm out looking at a Corvette, and I'm just not certain. I'd call him, and he'd call me back and say, "I remember clearly how he saved me one day. I went up and looked at a Corvette, and uh, I got some story from this guy. It's his girlfriend. She always took care <laughs> of it. That's so I called Mike, and he, I texted him the the VIN. He didn't text me back. He called me immediately. He said, "I want you to get in your car." and leave right now. He said that car has had seven owners. It's had major, major problems, you know, and he just literally, because it was a nice, <laughs> no, yeah. look nice. Uh -huh. yeah, but you but had underneath. no idea how bad mm -hmm. uh, the thing could be. Yeah. So always good to check the facts. And oh, sure. We had sure. Chris Haas on from Haas Automotive, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. he's a great, it's a great dealership to get your pre local cars. People. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. local. He's awesome to deal with, and mm -hmm. um, you know we had him, and we were honored to have him. We hope to have him back mm -hmm. on our podcast, also. So, uh, well, what do you think we got planned for coming up here this year? Well, hopefully, we got a bunch of shows. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got three so far, so we we usually put yeah, the schedule got, together yeah, after the first. Up for uh, you. I really need your schedule way ahead of time because I'm planning on going to the West Coast on my bike. I want to mm -hmm. ride the Pacific Coast Highway. And then on the way back, it's the 50th anniversary of the Colorado Rocky Rally. And uh, I'm having sh shoulder surgery February 10th. They're going to replace it, so I don't think Ooh. I'll be ready for Daytona. Yeah, It <laughs> takes three weeks in a sling, uh -huh. but I will be ready in May. It's I the signed up. It's the yeah. physical therapy yeah. that kills you. Yeah. <laughs> I so did I, twice. I signed up for uh, the reliability rally, mm -hmm. and this year it's going to take place in southern Ohio. And I went out and purchased a... Well, both a 78 BMW R100 and a 93 Sportster. And, okay. uh, but the BMW, uh, I'm pretty close to, you know, firing it up and that, and that would be kind of like a neat vintage kind of thing. And this reliability rally, you can Google it. It is a lot like a Moto Guerra where, you know, you're going to do 400 miles in two days, but you're going to have a uh, high speed stop. You're going to have a, uh, who's the fastest in a marked distance. Uh, you're going to have a slow race to see who can stay on the bike with it literally going as slow as possible. And then you're going to have time sections on the course. So it'll be a full two days of doing 400 miles on vintage bikes. And the caveat is that you could not have a bike that started out at more than $1,000. No, it's kind of like the... Um uh, 24 hour of lemons. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where you have a thousand, fifteen hundred dollar uh, car. Hey, uh, we could I would love to do Volkswagen that. Do that sure, right? sure. Two, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, what do you got in your corral now? Yeah. Um, 
About, you know, he's got about 15 14 cars. 14 cars. He's got a lot of them hidden so his wife doesn't see him. No. <laughs> she knows everything. She what, got the last car. What's underneath that piece of cam? Yeah, oh, she, <laughs> she knows the combination <laughs> of my garage. She goes in there all the time. Okay. Uh, well, what about the ones that are off-site, though? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> the other garages. <laughs> well, can I stay at your place now? I think my stuff's going to be outside. Hey, hey, bring a pup tent. Oh, I had a big patio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as there's concrete under it. It is, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really, I am satisfied with what I have, so mm -hmm. I've had it for years. I'm one of those guys that keeps something forever. So, as you probably know, my Caprice was my first car, and I still have it. Um, so, you know, it's... He takes it out every once in a while. Yeah, I, st I yeah. still drive it. Uh, my white Ford, my 68 LTD two-door, um, was my grandparents' car, and I hauled that back from Arizona. They bought that new. Those come with 427s, didn't they? They came with 429. Nine? They came with a 429 428. and 428s. Okay, 428s. Okay. They came with a 4 They could have, The yeah. 28 was yeah. a Cobra Jet, and that 29 is called something else. Yeah. So there was a 28 and a 29. Yeah, the yeah. 428s are the sought-after <clears throat> ones. And if you get find one of the 100 that were built with oh, a four-speed, oh. with a four-speed. Uh -huh. um, yeah, they I've were very rare. Wow. I've seen pictures of them. And then, day, yeah. you know, I still have Herbie the Love Bug, the 65 Beetle, the Herbie replica. I've had that since 1997. You did that that long ago? Yeah. Wow. Right, I'll and tell you what, if you get a chance 22. to see uh, Greg's Beetles, their and top then, flight restoration. Then I, really they cool. had the 61 Beetle. I still, you know, I bought that. I was intending to the red buy one. that. The red one. Yeah, the red mm -hmm. one, which is a, a long <clears throat> story behind it, too, which uh, you want to check it out on YouTube. I think I went over it. Um, but I restored that one and planned to sell it, and I, mm -hmm. couldn't get, I couldn't get rid of it. So it's sitting in there along we just... And along with my son's cars, and my daughter has a couple cars. His my wife's got four his, cars. His son's a chip off the old block here. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got, a nice young man. He's mm -hmm. got really three is. cars, and you know he's got a three thousand GT. Must or he just he yeah, has that, that thing sounds. What's good. that? The Mitsubishi. Yeah, yeah, he's got a white ninety-five three thousand GT. He's got a. He got bought another Eclipse mm -hmm. after he, somebody hit him with his Eclipse, and he bought a Dodge Ram, and you know we've got a bunch of cars. Mm -hmm. You know just. Uh, yeah, we're into everything Jeep. <laughs> we have a Jeep. We we got two Jeeps now. Oh, really? We bought another Jeep. Looks uh, like a used car lot yeah, there over fun. North Line but, of there. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so nothing's changed. I've, you know, I've kind of, I don't want to restore anymore. I'm mm -hmm. done. I, I end, Just end up getting them. a bicycle and restoring that. Mm -hmm. and oh, I got you a, did a great job on I, that. I got another Dune Cat. If you know what a Dune Cat is, look up a Muskin Dune Cat. So I made him three years. I bought one because I was You got one another one. one. Second I bought one. another one. How did you find it at? Marketplace. <laughs> yeah, I found it, and the guy had it sitting in the weeds. So I pulled it out. I'll restore that and get that done. And I'll just hang on to it. And when I retire, I sell the stuff and mm -hmm. go to Florida. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's just 401k. Yeah, yeah, that is my 401k. Sell it everything works. off. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, uh, but uh, we're running out of time. So um, we're... Pleased to have Rick and Larry here for the Street Scene Power Hour. It is our last, last show of the year yep. before the holidays. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're hearing the bells. Oh, look, it's Santa's elves. Uh -huh. Rick has hung some bells off some things. <laughs> oh, that would be my hat. I wasn't uh -huh. trying to imply anything else. Um, we, uh, we're going to keep some shows coming for you. Keep tuning in. Download those other episodes because they are extremely interesting check out street scene on youtube and um for street scene power hour my name is greg roten we have larry ward and rick herrera we'll, we'll see, see you, you down, down the road, road.